I'd like to talk for just a few minutes about the improvements that have been made to the W670 engine. Um, over the years, uh, many different shops have contributed to that effort, uh, so it's not certainly not been uh, something that we have developed all of this on our own, though some of these things are, are things that we have developed. We are, however, using all of the engine improvements in our engine overhauls. Uh, one of the weaknesses of the W670 engine for many years was the uh, ball main bearings. Uh, you would see repeated failures of those ball main bearings, uh, mostly the rear main bearing, but also the front main bearing. And um, a few years ago, approval was granted to install the, um, the roller main bearings. And uh, this, this bearing uh, can be disassembled, and the, the rollers have much greater contact area than the, uh, the original ball bearings did. We often receive questions about, well, how can I tell? There's nothing in my logbooks to reflect whether it has roller bearings or ball bearings in it. How can I tell? About the only way that I know of, if you can't contact the overhauler and find out, is to pull a cylinder. Pull an easy cylinder because you'll be able to see the same thing from any one. So pull number three or, or uh, number six, they, they should be easier than uh, certainly than number one, four or five. And just look in there. If you can see the, um, uh, the rounded ball cage, the riveted cage, uh, then you'll know that you have ball bearings. If you uh, look in and you see the bronze uh, bearing retainer, uh, this, is, uh, this is a roller bearing. So that's, that's really about the only way to tell. Another improvement is one that we've already talked about, which was the shielded ignition harness. We received approval about five years ago to put that, that rear uh, shielded ignition harness on, and that's, that's really helped with, uh, uh, with radio interference. Another one is a much more modern seal. Uh, we use these seals in the oil pump, um, at b both in the duplex oil pump and the scavenge oil pump, and also in the magneto drive gear location. That was a real weakness with the original uh, seal was that it was a leather seal that would accumulate moisture and would rust the, uh, the magneto drive gear. These modern seals are uh, neoprene, a high temperature neoprene and, and work much better. Another one is the double sealed bearing for the generator step-up drive. A lot of people have, uh, have experienced problems with their generator step-up drive with oil leaking back through into their generator or their alternator. This double sealed bearing will stop that. It, it is not just a shielded bearing, it actually has seals on both sides. So it stops the oil from, uh, from coming back through the generator step-up drive. Another improvement over the last few years is, is the availability of new pistons. New pistons were, were getting very, very scarce and now they're available again. Not only new pistons, but new pistons that for the number four and number five location, the two bottom ones, are not drilled in the oil control uh, groove. So they don't drain as much oil down into the lower cylinders and, uh, and really improve the chances that you won't have a liquid lock. Another improvement that, this is actually a very old improvement, but it's one that we got approved for the W670 and W6, uh, W676A and 6N engines fairly recently, was the, um, the NAR6G carburetor. Back in the, in the late 40s, right after the war, Bendix Stromberg recognized that they had problems with their NAR6D carburetors. And for any of you who have flown behind Ds, you know that they often have a flat spot where you accelerate through, oh, 13, 14, 1500 RPMs and it stumbles and, and coughs and carries on. And once you get through that, it's okay. The NAR6G was Bendix Stromberg's uh, answer to that problem. Unfortunately, the NAR6G was not approved for either the W676A or 6N. It was only for a W670-16, which isn't a big problem other than that almost everyone is flying a 6A or a 6N. So we got approval from the FAA to put the NAR6G, the improved carburetor, on the 6A and the 6N. 
And then probably the, the biggest improvement of all that, uh, that we've been involved with and uh, probably is the biggest improvement to the engine that, uh, that ever will be made is the replacement of that carburetor altogether with fuel injection. We've already fuel injected the Jacobs R755 A2 and B2 engines. That was a very, very successful project that um, resulted in about a 10% horsepower increase. Um, it um, uh, reduced the fuel consumption by about two gallons per hour. And, um, and we're constantly called by folks asking when that will be available for the W670. It is something that's in the works, but uh, we have to limit the number of projects that we take on. And right now we're fuel injecting the Pratt & Whitney R985. So once we get past that project, then we'll, uh, we'll take on the W670 and, and also the R680 Lycoming. Uh, but for right now, those are the, the major improvements that have been made to the engine, and they, they really do help with, uh, with making a much more reliable engine.